What's up guys, it's Project, and welcome to my weapon guides for Monster Hunter Rise. These guides are made to simplify, streamline, and improve your gameplay by showing you the best DPS combos so you can hunt like a pro in no time. With Rise, the introduction of Silkbind attacks and switch skills can confuse players on what's best of the best to use, so this guide will provide that answer for you, with data taken from my own testing and watching countless speedrun videos from elite players. Ultimately, play how you want to have the most fun, but if you want to be meta and kill monsters in under 10 or even 5 minutes, then you've come to the right place. Before we begin, tests are performed with no gear or no special skills or effects activated, as well as zero affinity. Also, for the sake of console and PC players coming to rise from world, I will refer to ZL and ZR as L2 and R2. So if you're ready to rock, then give the video a thumbs up and let's begin. What do you get when you combine a sword, a shield, and a Michael Bay that works at a pizza place? Well, you get the Charge Blade. The Charge Blade is a cutting weapon. Use it to cut things, like uh, like the pizza cutter. Hey, mamma mia, cutting pizza with the Charge Blade. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but seriously, Charge Blade is a tricky weapon, not only with all its nuances, but in how it plays. It can morph between a sword and board style, and then into a giant axe that can spin like the Whirligig saw from Bloodborne with a certain switch skill. Or you can unleash in a variety of ways. The gist of the weapon is based around its file system. Attacking in sword mode generates a gauge. By reaching yellow or red gauge, you can store this energy into files via R2 plus A, with yellow giving three and red maxing all five files. If you have no files when you do that move, you'll do this weird animation. Though, you can do a short hop to the side by pressing B during this in case you screw up. But once you have files, you switch to axe mode and you can spend these files with A attacks. Alternatively, you can transform those files into energy for your shield, giving it a buff with a duration depending on the number of files you had before charging it. That increases your block threshold to reduce damage and knock back more, while also increasing your axe form damage since the shield is the axe. And if you get files again, you gain access to the Ultra Element Discharge, also known as UAD via X plus A, which unleashes all files into a giant explosion in a narrow line in front of you. But again, you have to have the red shield buff in order to do this attack. There exists different file types for Charge Blade 2, where something like an Impact File Charge Blade gives you the ability to knock out a monster if your explosions hit the head, downing them for over 13 seconds for more free hits, or the Elemental File that boosts your elemental damage when expending files. There also exists a move that can charge your sword with file energy as well, without costing any files so long as you have your shield buff to red. When you do the file load animation, if you hold down A for a bit, your sword will become amped with a red icon, not only giving you extra hits with each sword attack, which could also KO a monster if you're using impact file, but it also makes your sword attacks bounce proof. Though, be careful with over or under charging it as you then won't get the buff if you let go at the wrong time. And generally, a lot of charge blade moves take precise timing, which speaking of, the shield form of axe has a unique gimmick as well, where certain animations put the shield in front of you, which could actually block attacks despite you not holding R2 to block. There are three of these guard points for the default settings. One after the spinning slash. When morph switching via R2 plus X, there's one shortly at the beginning. And the last is going from axe to sword at the end of the animation. And finally, Charge Blade got a new generic move with wire bugs. It is not a skill, but it still uses bugs that allow you to quickly zip to any direction you want. And you can attack after it with either X, A or X plus A. So yeah, this is very powerful. I I don't know why CB gets this for free while Great Swords takes up a slot, but whatever. So the goal of Charge Blade is to generally max out your files and then unleash them in now and rise a variety of ways. But in most cases, the Ultra Element Discharge is still the biggest damage output you can have. So most players generally try to spam that as much as possible while guard point blocking in between attacks. Although. GP blocking is a little bit more advanced that new players don't really have to worry about. See, I know, I know it seems complicated for new players, but I will simplify all of this via the combos after talking about switch skills, of which this time I'll go in order from 1 to 3. So the first new skill for Rise is Condensed Spinning Slash, otherwise known as Savage Axe Mode. 
This replaces the sword buff skill I mentioned earlier, but this time it buffs your axe to a spinning pizza cutter of death. Though, this mode only lasts while you have axe mode out, so if you switch back to sword or you sheathe your weapon, you will have to redo the same animation via R2 plus A, then holding X. Keep in mind when doing this, if you don't want to have this slow buildup animation, then make sure to have yellow or red gauge when you do the final charge animation so you can skip the weird chug thing. Also, unlike the sword skill, you don't need a shield buff to access this animation, but having the shield buff still increases your damage. This skill is pretty much the only thing that makes axe mode even usable. Pressing X and A attacks will do basic trash attacks, but if you hold down X or A, you will grind that puppy hard. The X does vertical attacks and the A's are the horizontal moves. What's interesting here is you can actually gain files while attacking by holding the buttons down. The verticals will usually gain charges after so many attacks, while the first of the A attack will expend a file, but if you press and hold A again, you can actually gen it back with a second hit. So this skill provides an alternate attack pattern you can do aside spamming UAD, which to be honest, this mode is a must have against the smaller monsters that UAD usually misses. Also, with the morphing advanced wirebug move I mentioned earlier, you can combine that with your pizza cutter to reposition and shred. The second new skill is counter morph slash. This replaces your standard morph slash for a more slower one. This is kind of an odd skill, but it gives you an additional guard point at the beginning of axe to sword mode. This is useful since now you can be defensive even in axe mode if you need to. Say, after using your savage axe skill, you can guard point and block an attack. But there's a negative. If you don't block anything with the guard point, you do this weird ass thrust poke thing that takes super long and leaves you vulnerable. But a way around that is simply pressing R1 to sheathe your weapon and reposition. This will allow you to at least move a bit to potentially avoid an attack. So yeah, that's about it. You get two guard points with this instead of one compared to the standard morph slash. Though with the counter morph slash skill, it does increase your file damage if you guard point correctly, unlike the morph slash. So there is that benefit to aid players that are good at guard pointing, you get more file damage. And the last switch skill slot has two new skills. These will cost one wire bug each to use, and the first is counter peak performance via L2 plus A. This is by far one of Charge Blade's most broken skills to have. It essentially lets you counter a move near instantly, and if successful, it fills your files to full. Meaning immediately after the animation, you can do a UAD instantly with full files and red shield prior. Now the attack you counter generally has to be in front of you as getting hit from the side or the back will still get you hit. But otherwise, yeah, it's broken. You can also activate this in either sword or shield form as well. So yeah, it's broken. <laughs> now the last skill is Axe Hopper and you will have to decide if you want to sacrifice counter peak for this. But this is basically UAD, but more powerful and allows you to change the direction far better than you can with UAD. Hitting A does a mini discharge and hitting X or R2 do basic attacks if you want to save files if the monster reposition out of range for example, while X plus A does the UAD. But the hop up is a double edged sword. On one hand, you can avoid some attacks by hopping over it, particularly against smaller monsters. But some of the bigger mons like Mag or Zenogre, you'll just get hit out of the air by some weird hitbox. Those guys have some big backs. And yeah, that's about it. In most cases, you should use counter peak over this, but you know, against a smaller monster, the mid-air repositioning is nice. And in multiplayer, the monster is not always going to attack you to make use of counter peak all the time, to where this will be better to cover more ground than the stationary UAD. But it's up to you which one you want to use. So those are all the new skills and mechanics for Charge Blade. As far as armor skills you want for Charge Blade, Rapid Morph is a pretty good one to have as it'll speed up your axe to sword or sword to axe animations. Artillery increases your file damage, and Load Shells, perhaps the best one, allows you to get full files even at yellow gauge. So add those to your repertoire to upgrade your charge play play. And now it is finally time for the best combos. Combo one. Naturally, the first combo has to be how to get to full gauge so you can pull off that sweet, sweet UAD. There's a variety of ways to do it, and I'll show you a couple here. The best opener is with the weapon sheath. You open with X, then hold down A to charge, into X, into X plus A, into XX, and boom! You got red energy for full files, 
and then you simply press R2 plus A to fill the files. Adding a B right after the file fill cancels the rest of that animation. Now, there is a hop combo that's a slightly faster opener, but the damage difference doesn't make up for the speed, I think. And regardless, if you do have the low shells level 2 skill, this combo becomes even faster, getting full files after just the first charge slash. Just be mindful not to overcharge the slash attack. You want to let go of the A button as soon as it flashes. The other method, B, is when the weapon is out. Simply charge slash into X and into another charge slash A. It gets you full gauge and then you hit R2 plus A to fill the files. Pretty simple. So now that you have your files, the next step is to buff the shield. Unfortunately, this requires another combo, which is the same way you would do a UAD from sword mode ironically. Essentially, you hit X plus A three times, and that's it. <laughs> Normally, this does the elemental discharge move by doing that, so the key component here is to cancel that last X plus A animation with R2. Again, you'll have to time it right, but it'll be easy once you get used to it. And you do that, and congrats! Now your shield is buffed. You can also do this in Axe mode by simply pressing X plus A and then R2. My recommendation when doing all these moves, aside the charge moves, is spam the buttons. So after X plus A, just spam R2 instead of trying to time it just right. You'll feel like a kid again and still get the same job done. Combo two. So, with the shield buff, it is combo 2 time. Now, if you hit the monster with that previous buff combo in sword mode with most of the attacks, then you can get full files with a single charge A into round slash X. But if you don't hit the monster at all with any of the attacks, then use method B from combo 1. Of course, all of this is thrown out the window with the new counter peak performance. Why do all these combos when you can just counter for full files into UAD? Which speaking of, it's UAD time. The same exact combo you used to buff the shield in combo 1 is how you do a UAD, except without the R2. Again, you'll need the shield buff first though, and you need files, so you spam X plus A three times, and boom! Now, if the monster looks like it's gonna move right at the last minute, then holding back on the left analog and hitting X just after X plus A does a shorter slam, expending only one file instead of all five. And it works really well for small monsters too. Again, you can just use X plus A in Axe mode to do a UAD, or just after the counter peak skill. And lastly, you can also do it right after a guard point blocking an attack. So many ways to unleash your UAD onto the enemy's face. And one last trick is left analog plus A after attacking with extra A does a slide attack. This is useful to reposition, say backwards, to go into UAD to hit the head of a monster better. So to recap this entire combo string, here it is. Phew, that was a lot, but we're almost done, we're almost done. The last combo is pretty much Savage Axe Mode. There's no real point of damage comparisons when UAD or Axe Hopper crush everything else you could do with Charge Blade, but Savage Axe does have some merit. Fortunately, it's also fairly simple. You get the red shield, you get files, get yellow or red gauge, and you get the combo. R2 plus A to load up, then hold X to start spinning, release X, then hold A, then hold X, and repeat. You'll basically never lose files with this, and this does decent damage, so long as you keep hitting the monster. I recommend using the wire bug move L2 plus X to reposition so you don't lose. Pizza time. Now for button pressing, Savage Axe does feel a bit awkward, so I recommend double tapping the buttons and then holding it to transition faster between animations. So XX hold, a, A hold and repeat. There's a, there's a lot of unnecessary lag between the attacks or even the beginning animation that you can skip if you release the hold sooner than you think. And yeah, you can always throw a counter P performance or axe hopper out between a monster's attack and then unleash a UAD with the files you have. And that is my combo guide for Charge Blade. I think Charge Blade is awesome in Rise and pretty much all the new skills are good and usable. So I hope that helps you guys have more fun with Charge Blade. I know Charge Blade is a bit tough to get a handle of, especially for small sharks, 
but I hope I did a good job of streamlining things you managed to be concerned with using so that even small VTuber sharks can become Charge Blade Masters. So in the name of Michael Bay, I raise my files to you, Charge Blade Chads. If I missed anything important, let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching the video, I really appreciate it. If you can, please give the video a like and comment down below any questions you have about the weapon or let me know if you main or plan to main the weapon in Rise. But that's all for me, I sometimes stream the game so join in for some fun hunts. And of course, if you want to see more guys like this, then subscribe and hit that notification bell because... A hunter must hunt.